Today we're going to go over this fluid mechanics problem. The problem states that the figure below shows a water spray system consisting of nine nozzles connected to a header or a distributor. Each nozzle is four millimeters in diameter. The pressure in the header is maintained at 450 kilopascals and that's gauge pressure. The header receives water from a pipe that is 50 millimeters in diameter. The area of the header is much larger than that of the nozzle. Determine the velocity of the water issuing from each nozzle, the velocity of the water in the 50 millimeter pipe leading to the header. This problem is actually pretty straightforward, although there is one slight assumption that you have to take account for when doing this problem. And the major hint when it comes to dealing with that assumption is that it states that the area of the header is much larger, much larger than that of the nozzle. And you'll see how that plays a role when we determine the velocity of the water issuing from each nozzle. So for part A, we're just gonna simply apply Bernoulli's principle or Bernoulli's equation from the header to the nozzle. So I'm gonna call this point, this point right when the water enters the header. So this is going to be point one. And then the second point where we're gonna apply Bernoulli's equation is gonna be over here, point two. So let's apply Bernoulli's equation, which is gonna be pH over rho g plus the velocity at the point one, plus the potential from point one equals the pressure at two, plus the velocity at two, plus the potential at two. So let's begin canceling out some terms from this equation so we could find the velocity issuing from the nozzle, which is gonna be the velocity at two. So our goal is to find V2. So we can ignore the height of the system because we could say that the height is pretty negligible from the header to the nozzles. So what I'm saying is that the distance from Z1 to Z2 is practically zero. This is gonna be zero and this is going to be zero. Now we make that assumption dealing with the area of the header being much larger than the nozzle. So let me draw out a picture to demonstrate this. So let's say you have a big bucket of water, a huge bucket of water, and this is the water level, and this is at atmospheric pressure. And let's say we have a hole the size of like that proportionally to the bucket of water. Water is gonna flow out pretty quickly, which is gonna cause the height of the water to drop pretty quickly. And that's simply due to continuity, meaning a lot of water flows out relative to the size of the bucket of water, which will cause the water level to drop quickly as well. However, if you change that hole to a very, very small hole, small amounts of water is gonna come out from this hole, causing the water level of this bucket to drop very, very slowly. And this is comparable to our problem. We have very small holes relative to this big body of water, which is in the header. So what we can say, since the water flowing out is not much, it does not affect the velocity of the height of the water that much. So we could practically say that the velocity at this point is practically zero. So if we go back to our equation, we could say that the velocity at one is zero. Now, another one that we have to cancel out is the pressure at two. So in the problem, it states that the pressure in the header is maintained at 450 kilopascals gauge. So gauge pressure already takes an account of atmospheric pressure. So we could say that the pressure of the header is simply is the gauge pressure plus atmospheric pressure. But for P2, we could simply say that is atmospheric pressure because the water is leaving the nozzle and we're assuming it's just exiting into the atmosphere. So we could say that the pressure at the nozzles is simply, simply atmospheric pressure. So if you plug in these values into this equation, what you're gonna leave off with is this simply being the gauge pressure and this going to zero because it is just atmospheric pressure. So now let's rewrite our equation and we'll be able to solve for V2 or the velocity at the nozzles. So V2 equals, and if you plug in these values, what we get is 30 meters per second. And that is your answer for part A. For part B, to find the velocity of the water in the 50 millimeter pipe, what we can do is to simply apply the concept of continuity. So we could say that the flow through let's say this is 0.3, through the pipe has to equal the flow coming out of the nozzles. So the amount of water coming into here, the rate of water coming into here, has to equal the water coming out of all these nozzles. 
That's the idea of continuity. So we're gonna apply that the flow rate at three has to equal the number of nozzles, which is n. So I'll define n as nine. So n equals nine times the flow rate of one of the nozzles. So we can simply say that this is gonna be n times the velocity at two times the area at two. So this is just a volumetric flow rate of one nozzle. So the area at two, we're given the diameter of the nozzle, so we could just simply apply that to the area. So we could say that this is equal to n v2 pi d squared over four, and d is predefined as four millimeters. And we simply apply the same formula for the flow rate at three without the multiplier of nine because it doesn't have more than one entrance. So we could say the velocity at three times the area. Now that we have this relationship, all we have to do is solve for B3. And now we just plug in the values for these different parameters. So N is nine for the nine different nozzles and then the ratio of the diameters squared then you simply multiply by the velocity at two, which we found in part A, which is 30 meters per second. So once you plug all this stuff into your calculator, what you get is 1.728 meters per second. And that is your answer for part B. So hopefully I made this problem pretty clear. It's pretty straightforward. I believe the hardest part of this problem is making those assumptions when it comes to Bernoulli's equation. Understanding that a large body of water with a small exit for the water, you can say that the velocity of the initial height of the water is just zero because it goes down very slowly relative to the size of the hole. So hopefully I helped you with those assumptions and I'll see you in the next video.